welcome to our living room. When I was in fifth grade, the teacher announced, I remember her well, that whoever memorized the Gettysburg Address in the class first would be able to play Abraham Lincoln in the school play. I'd never been in a school play before, but I went home that night and I memorized the Gettysburg Address. And the next day, or whenever it was, I think it was the very next day the teacher asked, has anyone memorized the Gettysburg Address? And I raised my hand, and so I played Abraham Lincoln. Now at that day, when I memorized the Gettysburg Address, something imprinted in my consciousness, which has been part of my work ever since, and it's the word consecration. I don't know, I didn't know until recently when I saw the book, uh, I read the book about Abraham Lincoln, uh, Team of Rivals, and in it there was the Gettysburg Address word for word, and there was the word consecration, and I realized, ah, this word which has been part of my work for 30 years, 35 years, that's where it first entered into my consciousness. I remember then asking my parents, what does this word mean? And then going to the dictionary and pondering it. And then, of course, there was no reason to pay attention to that word the rest of my life until after my opening, awakening, and the beginning of my career as a teacher. And from that point forward, I've never been focused on the intent to change. I've been focused on a consecrated life. Well, what is the deeper principle that makes the life I'm living sacred? The great spiritual teachers have always said it's not the answers that are important, it's asking the right questions. And so one of the questions I want to place to you is, what is the consecration that you want your life to be the answer to? What is the consecration you want to embody and your life becomes the expression of that consecration? How do you let your life become sacred? In a previous video, I talked about tears of recognition and how when we see what we know is sacred, like tenderness and compassion and courage, we cry. When we see love triumph over adversity, we cry. So the word consecration is so important in my work because it's really a question of what kind of human being do each of us want to be? What, what are we living for? What's the deep heart map, the spiritual kind of stars that we steer by, that we navigate by? And it is a feeling, not just a concept. It's a recognition of what's important, what really matters. So, for example, Abraham Lincoln was consecrated to and expressed it so beautifully in the Gettysburg Address the principle of the founding fathers of the United States, which was to create a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. It had never, ever happened before in history. The creation of that principle for self-governing was what 600,000 men died for in the Civil War, in the American Civil War. And the president had to explain that this war was essential because that principle was going to affect not only the future of the peoples of the United States, but the future of all human beings on planet Earth. The concept of government by the people, for the people, of the people, was going to spread. It was going to replace monarchy. It was going to re replace dictatorship. It's, it is replacing every other form of government because it is the kind of principle that we want to live by. It's the value that all human beings ultimately want, they want to have, that we have the freedom to choose the values that we'll live by, the rules and the laws by which we'll live. And so I ask us, you know, what, what do we imagine right now here in America, and for others, because I know this will reach people of other nationalities, what do, you, what do you see your life consecrated to, and what do you sense your country, your government is consecrated to. Sadly, there's just so much fear and self-interest. Survival seems to be the consecration, because where there's fear and self-interest and survival, that's, that's the God we're bowing to. 
We're not bowing to a deeper God, the, deep, the God of connection, connectedness, belonging, and love. So if we're going to consecrate ourselves, make our lives sacred, let it be that we live our lives through our practices, our spiritual practices, through what we devote ourselves to with our careers, through how we treat people, how we listen to people, what comes out of our mouths, that is a reflection of what we want to see happen, that no longer will fear be our God and therefore push us to success and having and having more and consumerism, because that's what we believe, that that will make us safe, that, that will make us complete, when it isn't, whatever makes us complete. Some of it is necessary, a lot of it isn't. I don't want to be a judge of that. What I want us to remember is that there is something much more beautiful that we can give our lives to. So think about it. What is your life consecrated to? What, what do you want to embody so deeply that when you die, people look at you and cry and, and they cry because they think, I want to be like this person. I want to emulate this person, not live his life or her life. I want to emulate the principles, the quality of humanity, the compassion, the, the dedication, the courage, the simplicity, the humility that I see in this person, that I feel in this person. This is the way that we're going to change our world. This is the way we're going to listen and look to see who we want to elect. So, consecration. To set aside and to live in such a way that our lives become sacred, our choices are based on the basis of whether they really recognize what we know to be sacred. And you know it. We all do deeply know it. Once we get past fear, it's time that fear is no longer the God, our God. We honor it. It's taught us survival. It continues to teach us survival. But there's a far more important God, the God of love, belonging, connectedness. Thank you for your ears and your hearts. <laughs>